okay friends welcome back welcome once again to yet another webinar from sequel maestros and today we are going to talk about sequel server query hints okay i have turned off the screen for the time being while i talk to you now <clears throat> few housekeeping things common questions that we get asked is about recording of the webinars <clears throat> yes all webinars are recorded and they are available on sequelmaestros.com you can see the recorded webinar section on the menu some of them are free some of them are very normally normally priced just so that it can help us to host all the webinars there's there's a cost to everything so we try to recover that cost from that nominee fee so it's up to you whichever you wish to subscribe for in case you subscribe to any of those webinars you get lifetime access uh that's the first question second during the session if you have questions please use the q and a panel please do not use the chat window third common question what about past recordings yes all past recordings are also available as many as we remember that were recorded we have put them up here and and old webinars are also in the process of being put up on the website if you see right now all the webinars that were delivered this year from 2023 uh, you know jan onwards they are all up there well with this uh, here are a few links in the chat window that might interest you most importantly the youtube channel so the link would be somewhere in in the list of links that i have given the youtube channel has lot of sql server tutorials and demos and each thursday we are putting up something like the one we did today and um, yeah a lot of free content out there and you can become a free uh, member on sqlmaestros.com which will give access uh, to you for all free sql server webinars videos and you know everything that's freely available on sqlmaestros.com yeah and of course there are video courses master classes all in one bundle those are priced uh, uh, products learning solutions as well all of them are lifetime access in case you wish to subscribe to any of them you get them for life so no annual subscription no renewal nothing of all that so yeah feel free to explore okay welcome once again good morning good evening good afternoon depending on where you have joined from query hints a practical approach now this is one topic that is very very debatable highly debatable in terms of which hints are good bad ugly and when to use them when not to use them and uh, people are kind of divided and split over um, uh, you know whenever discussions about query hints come up so before we talk about these hints some of them the commonly ones that we use i'm showing you today i wanted to show you five but looks like the kind of time i have we will be able to do only four of them but we'll i'll give it a try to cover all of them but first things first query hints very common question that gets asked all the time is are they good are they bad should we use them should we not use them here is my take query nothing nothing in sql server a, or uh, you know things like query hints nothing is so called uh, generically like bad it's it's nothing like anything in sql server is bad evil or ugly it's up there it's a it's a functionality it's a feature that is there for you to leverage the whole idea is in which scenarios are you using it right what what is your case what is uh, your scenario what is your problem what is the problem that you are trying to solve but then there are certain general uh, uh, thumb rules that you might want to follow don't jump to query hints as the first solution when you see a performance problem or or a, or any problem for that matter don't don't jump to query hints as the first solution probably query hints will be your last resort in your performance tuning endeavor so you might try to rewrite the query you might play around with statistics or indexes or uh maybe uh, new t sql functionality so there are a lot of different things that you can try to achieve what you are trying to achieve and if nothing works you may resort to query hints so it's nothing like query hints are good or bad it all depends on where you are applying them and in which scenarios that's the first thing the second thing about query hints which i see is and i'm going to show you an example today in fact the last example is one of the most relevant practical example is you are applying a query hint to tweak the behavior basically you are hinting the optimizer to behave in a certain way in the way you want the optimizer to run and that could be a temporary fix 
query hints are in my opinion never a permanent fix they are a temporary fix so it is very important that you are aware that you are temporarily applying a query hint to change the course of action for some time until you are trying to figure out other solutions etc etc so make sure that they don't become permanent because in the in the course of time the data might change uh, configurations might change a lot of things might change and then the same query hint that was giving you that temporary benefit might suddenly become evil and may start degrading performance so in most uh, see you know with everything in sql server there are always edge cases right we are not talking about those exceptions and edge cases but we are talking about general rule uh, you know thumb rules here so uh, uh, these are certain ideas behind uh, query hints and when you talk about these hints uh specifically they're all kind of categorized like lock hints table hints query hints etc so that was just a very quick overview about hints now let's jump into demo straight away questions are welcome please continue to use the q and a panel okay so just to let you know today we have uh, 180 folks uh joining uh today's session so that is really good thanks very much let's start the demo once more okay we are using adventure works 2016 for the purpose of demo we are creating this table called dbo sales which has two attributes order id and amount both are integer a simple dummy table only for the purpose of demo a sales order table may never look as simple as it is we are inserting 10 records into this table order id from 1 to 10 and the amount is 10 for each again very dummy data let's go ahead and do that all done now if you check the data and let's say you want to run a query like this look at this query this is simply giving you the sum of amount and let's say this is your analytical query right this is an analytical query uh something that gives you an aggregation or summation and something like this is running and a report is being generated out of it and remember this is a table which will let's say have thousands and millions of records so let's just simply run this and if we execute we get 100 right because we had amount 10 for 10 records all good now what happens is user 1 in a new connection window let's simulate user 1 i'm turning on a new query window here and let's copy this paste it here so what is user 1 trying to do uh user 1 another user another transaction is beginning a transaction and updating dbo sales and setting the amount to 20 where order id is 1 so someone is trying to update the data and changing the value from 10 to just the first record so if you see there is order id 1 right so let's go and update this table and remember this is an in flight transaction we are running begin trans so there is no commit no roll back okay question to all of you let's go and execute this one done one row affected this is an in flight transaction friend so please give me an answer in the chat window what locks are being taken right now as we speak as this transaction is going on it is still in flight what locks are being taken anyone okay update lock uh, exclusive lock x law very good deadlock Oh my god why deadlock there's just one transaction running right now simple update statement okay so exclusive locks yes most of you are right we have taken an exclusive lock which means now if we go back to the other user let's simulate this one is user 2 right and we want to do a normal select right we want to run this analytical query what will happen will this query go through a normal select statement or will it wait what do you think will this go through or will it wait someone is saying this is going to wait what do others think okay okay this is going to wait so let's go and execute this and as expected this is waiting simply because the idea is very simple this select statement wants shared lock s lock and s and x exclusive locks are incompatible and when you say select sum right you want all the data all the records but at least one record is being logged and you can't read that so this is going to wait and of course this is going to wait indefinitely because we have not set a lock time out etc so let's go and stop this now now 
what do you want to do option 1 and this is where we begin our first hint which is no lock okay what will no lock do no lock is a query hint which is equivalent to read uncommitted which means if you say select and you fire want you fire this query with no lock it is not going to honor any lock that has been taken right by the other transaction so if i go and execute this and see what you get and now before i run this friends what do you think what will be the output will it be 100 will it be 90 will it be 110 what do you think okay someone says it is going to be a dirty read 10 no this is a sum query right this is our analytical query 100 will it be 100 really what are we trying to do here change one of the records from 10 to 20 right so what do you think will be the output yes there you go this is going to be 110 110 because one of the records is changing from 10 to 20 so let's go and execute this and you see the output as 110 right so now what is no lock doing here no lock hint query hint is allowing you to read the dirty data remember this update statement is uh updating the value from 10 to 20 but this transaction is neither committed nor rolled back which means this update of 20 is considered as dirty data no lock query hint does not honor any lock which means dirty reads are possible and in real world why and when are those scenarios when no lock hint is used mostly most commonly seen in those reports analytical reports which you just want to run to get a summarized figure you want a summarized figure which is like computation or aggregation across hundreds and thousands of records and if you're reading some dirty data there or you're missing out some some data it doesn't really matter because those reports are giving you an aggregated figure and the business users who want that kind of data just want it for some analysis some idea and if it's a huge figure that we are talking about like some some numbers in millions even if a few hundreds and thousands are missing out from there or are are uh, incorrect because i say dirty data is kind of incorrect data it doesn't really matter but the report should run see here is the catch if this is like a end of the day end of the month report and you execute and it's waiting it doesn't help the business user you want no matter what you want the report to run and just give you an aggregated figure to get an idea what was the sales like was it kind of more than yesterday less than yesterday etc just to get that idea and you always want the report to run you always want the report to run you're using the no lock hint okay so that's the kind of a practical scenario where no lock hint is used and now if you talk about the caveats and disadvantages of all of this of course it's reading dirty data reading dirty data could be dangerous in many different scenarios so be very very careful where exactly no lock hint is being used if you are using no lock hint with uh, your queries which are reading financial transactional data uh that might be a huge risk because you reading dirty data that is not yet committed uh etc so never use no lock query hint without understanding the business implication of no lock all right now that is no lock hint now let's say your business scenario is something like i just cannot allow reading dirty data and the bookish example that i can give you is the um the financial world in the financial world uh, you know it's it's kind of uh, uh, a taboo to read uh, dirty data so you just cannot read dirty data or or uh, you know real time reservation system like let's say airlines etc i mean there's so many business scenarios where no one would really appreciate or allow reading dirty data uncommitted data so if that is the case but you still want the report to run 